exclusive coverage of the first round of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile. Stop by your Oldsmobile dealer and see what's new from the new generation of Olds. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Hertz, whether you rent a car for business or pleasure, Hertz is America's wheel. Welcome back to Louisville, Kentucky at the half in the first game of the Southeast region. It's Pittsburgh with a one-point lead over Georgia. The Panthers have the lead despite the fact that they shot 32% from the floor while Georgia shot 48%. Pittsburgh did have five points more from the foul line than did the Bulldogs, but that's great news for the Pitt Panthers. They really didn't play all that well in the first half, but they had the lead, Bill. I think Paul Evans has to be ecstatic that he's got the lead right now. They didn't play that well, really didn't have any sort of flow. Bobby Martin, their regular postman, had two fouls, didn't play much at all. Morningstar came in and played pretty well. I think for Georgia, on the other hand, Hugh Durham has got to be disappointed with his guard play. Cole has not done much. He has to step up in Latero Green's absence. He's got the injury. Plus, I think that the Georgia big men really have to finish more uh, frequently at the basket. They've missed the opportunities. They just haven't got it done around the basket area. The rebounding stats dead even. These two teams both strong inside. You talked about the guard play of Georgia. We did not see Latero Green in the first half. If Hugh Durham continues to trail in the early stages of the second half, do you think we'll see this man with a broken bone in his left hand? My guess is that we're not going to see Latero Green, even though he's given the guy some leadership right now. I, I think if we were going to see him, we would have seen him already, or to at least start the second half. Uh, I think that hand is very sore, too sore. It's all bandaged up. Plus, if I was playing against Latero Green in a game like this, the very first time he got anywhere near me, I'd just crack that hand yes, again. You, you made that <laughs> very clear already. Four points from the guards of Georgia in the first half, and that is all. Pitt got 17 points from its backcourt, including six each from Miller and Porter. Wilson leads Georgia and all scores with 11. And it's Pitt's ball to start the second half. Shorter collided with Wilson, who went down. There was no call, and Brian Shorter has his first field goal of the game. Four points at all for Shorter. Now, see, I don't know why you would front Shorter in that situation. He's done nothing all game down low. Play behind him, make him shoot jumpers until he makes some. Pitt had only three field goals in the last 11.50 of the first half, but yet they had the lead, and there's a great sign for Georgia. Jody Patton, who was ice cold in the first half, nails his first shot of three-pointer to tie the game. And he says, finally, a jumper goes down for me. I, I can play ball again. And he was 0 for 3 from three-point land in the first half. Martin, a strong drive, but it was short. Here's the man right here, Cole. He's got to play well for Georgia to win this basketball game. Harvey was bumped. The ball is going against Bobby Martin, his third. He was on the bench for much of the first half with two fouls. He played just eight minutes in the first half. Bobby Martin says, what do I got to do to stay in this basketball game? And Paul Evans sitting on the bench, looked at him, put his head down, and said, I'm not taking you out now. You've got me this far. It's on your shoulders. You think that's a good move? I'd leave him in. He's just playing so bad anyway, just fouling every time. Leave him in the ball game. See what happens. Harvey knocks down the jumper. He's the brother of Richard Harvey, a linebacker for the New England Patriots. I like the way Antonio Harvey's playing this basketball game. He and Marshall Wilson are really doing a great job for Georgia. Shooting, rebounding, leadership, doing all the things, all the intangibles it needs to win a basserball game. And there's a foul going against Neville Austin, his second. I think a good lineup move for Hugh Durham would be to take Neville Austin out of there, who's just fouling and not doing much, and put Reggie Tinch in there, who's a, a, a tremendous all-around athlete, a much better basketball player. And go with a smaller lineup, maybe match up a little bit better with Pittsburgh and get up and down the court better. Corner missed the first one. He gets the line a lot. He has 310 career free throws in Big East play. That's the third highest free throw total in Big East history behind only Chris Mullen and Charles Smith of Pittsburgh. Rod Cole, he did not score in the first half. He averages 11 a game. Matthews nearly had the steal, but he couldn't save it. 
along the sideline. Georgia usually plays a two-guard front with Green and Cole out in front all the game long. They're able to swing the ball back and forth. And Cole will penetrate and dish to Green, who shoots a lot. They're having to come up with a lot of new offensive sets in this game. It hasn't worked smoothly. Harvey the miss, shorter. Knocked it to the end of the court, but Harvey tracked it down. We played just more than two minutes of the second half. Georgia leads by one. The Bulldogs trail by one at the break. Cole short with a three. Miller. Cole was back defensively. Miller open for three. Just barely scraped the rim. Paint that one. The rim that is repainted. I'd like to see Georgia post up right now, not with Austin, of course, but get Antonio Harvey or Marshall Wilson down in the block and go to them and let them get to work. Cole watches another three, very short again. He's been short with two consecutive three-pointers. Shorter. That's the rhythm Shorter's going to need to get going in this basketball game, get some easy plays coming to him rather than have to work so hard individually to make it happen. He has the two points in the first half. He now has seven. And the Panthers are back on top by one. Patton, a three. Jody Patton is Georgia's all-time three-point leader. If either one of those threes that Patton has made don't go down, Georgia is out of this ballgame already, I think. Cole should stop shooting the three-pointer. Shorter, foul. Wilson and Harvey were in the neighborhood. It will be Harvey who picks up the foul. And Shorter is starting to take control of the game here in the opening minutes of the second half. Yeah, but the reason he's taking over it is the way that Neville Austin, number 35 in red, is playing him. Why play on the outside of him? You're bigger, you can jump higher, you're just as strong as he is. Just stand there and wait for him to bring the ball to you and knock it down. I think that's a very bad strategy that Neville Austin is showing. I mentioned a moment ago that Shorter gets the free throw line a lot. He is a much improved free throw shooter this year to the pleasure of Darren Morningstar. He came in as a 68% career free throw shooter entering this season. This year he's at 77%. He had one during this season of 29 in a row. He's four for six today after that miss. Georgia with no discernible offensive scheme right now. That's a three for Wilson. He'll try again for three. <laughs> Didn't get three for a quarter. Martin traveled and stepped out of bounds. They'll whistle him for going over the end line. They almost always call that a foul. The guy got bumped. He was on balance, trying to make an outlet pass. He got bumped and fell backwards. Should have been a foul. That game at College Park has been tight throughout, and Northeast Louisiana has been hanging with Duke. Georgia should post up right here. Take it down inside. They got big, strong guys. Bobby Martin, the center for Pittsburgh, is in foul trouble. He's got three. They're just letting Pittsburgh off the hook. Wilson knocks down the three. He missed twice from the corner. He hit that one from the top of the key. Wilson says, I'm shooting long jumpers today. I'm not going inside. 14 for Wilson. He leads all scores. He's already bettered his season average from 12 a game. Whistle underneath. Neville Austin was bumping with Brian Shorter, and Austin has just picked up his third. I think that's about the best thing that can happen for Georgia, really, to get Neville Austin in foul trouble, get him out of the game, bring guys like Kinch in there. 15-30, left in the second half. Georgia by four. Sean McDonough with Bill Walton back at Freedom Hall in Louisville. The first of four games here today in the Southeast region. First round action. The second game here will be Kansas and New Orleans. Tonight it's Florida State against USC. And the number two seed, Indiana, against the Chanticleers. The best nickname in the tournament from Coastal Carolina. Georgia has a four-point lead. 15-25 to play in the second half. Jason Matthews with a drive for Pitt. 
Morningstar, the offensive rebound, but he pissed, uh, pushed off. <laughs> George, Georgia switched off uh, into a man-to-man -man defense at the time. That's something that I think they should do more of. Morningstar picking up three fouls. Martin has three fouls. Pittsburgh is in a lot of trouble. Their big men are, are going down quickly because of foul trouble. I'd like to see Cole, the, the point guard for Georgia, get to the hoop more. He's only taken two shots in this game, both of them ill-advised three-pointers. Penetrate and get to the hoop. Throw it up on the board. Let those big guys come in and smash down some dunks. Those of you who've been watching other games, we welcome you to Louisville. That's a three-pointer for Marshall Wilson. He has been the story of the game for Georgia. He has scored 17 points in the absence of Latero Green. Green has not played at all. He is Georgia's leading scorer for the season at 20 points per game. But Wilson, we talked about early on, Bill, needed to fill the void, and he has in a big way. He stepped up in a big way, but a bigger problem right now is Rob Cole has three fouls. He's their only real ball handler they have left on this basketball team. Golden's got the bad hand. The Peril Green, I don't think it's going to play. I'd attack, I'd attack uh, Cole if I was Paul Evans, Pittsburgh Panthers. Georgia leads by seven, despite the fact that Cole was the third leading scorer for the Bulldogs this year. Has not scored a point. There's Latero Green on the bench. He has a fractured third metacarpal bone in that left hand. He leads the cheers today. He's the team leader of this fine team. And he's out there cheering and pushing them on, urging, giving everybody high five. Darrell Porter did get the shot to fall, but Morningstar has another rebound. Five rebounds for Morningstar. Jones had it swatted away by Antonio Harvey. A tremendous intimidating play that that Georgia's been making all game long. That's why you don't want to foul guys like Brian Shorter, because you got the big guys behind you to block shots. Orlando Bennett is back into the game. He wears number 32 for Georgia. The backcourt is Cole and Patton. Bennett, Wilson, and Harvey up front. Jody Patton drives away from Tim Hunter. Plays it in, and he was fouled. Morningstar picked up his fourth foul. This is a great block. A lot of big guys in there for Georgia. Antoine Harvey spiking that ball. The side was clear. Jody Patton just drives in. Morningstar, never as a big man do you want to reach in and hack down low unless you're Bill Lambeer and can't get off the ground. You want to get up in the air and push that ball out of there as a shot blocker. Pittsburgh has called a timeout. The Panthers suddenly trail by nine. Rod Cole has gone to the bench for the Bulldogs, who are in the midst of an 11-3 run. They've opened up the largest lead of the game for either team, nine points. And Jody Patton is at the line with one shot trying to finish off a three-point play. How funny this game is. Jody Patton, the lost man on this Georgia team. First round of the NCAA playoffs. He's the star player so far. Pittsburgh continues to shoot miserably. 32% in the first half. 29% of this half. Shorter had a goaltended. Orlando Bennett called for the goaltend as he wanted the shot away from Shorter. These plays are incredibly intimidating to a player like Brian Shorter. He gets wide open. Orlando Bennett just knocks the ball away. I thought it was a good block. I'm sure those referees have never been up near that high to make a play like that. John Golden with the basket, and he was fouled on the drive by Chris McNeil. <laughs> you got to be careful on those high fives with that bad wrist, though. Penetration. Where's the defense? Nowhere. He throws it up left hand, and he's got such a such a bandage on that hand. I don't know how he can even hold that basketball. Marshall Wilson to the bench. Reggie Tinch back in. Golden with the chance for another three-point play. He was Mr. South Carolina basketball his senior year in high school. Riverside High. Played for his father, Louie, who's one of the great high school coaches in South Carolina high school history. Pittsburgh's got to get a flow going right now. It's just 13 and a half minutes to go. They're down 10. Tim Glover doesn't play much, but he just buried the three. He only played in 15 of Pitt's 31 games this year. That's a good way to get it started, but I don't know what Paul Evans is doing with his substituting. I think he's got to go with his horses. The guys who have got him here, he's given up on his backcourt too early. He has used 11 players today. Harvey the miss. Golden had the position, but couldn't get the offensive rebound. Glover tracked it down. 
I don't think he could hold on to the ball. I think it, you know, it came to his left hand. It's so heavily banded, he just couldn't get it. With a good hand, he would have had that ball. George to buy seven. Hey, 30, 12, 50 to play. Shorter. He's been on fire here in the second half. 10 of his 12 points after halftime. When your best player is on fire and you're losing ground, that's a bad sign. Jody Patton, he's now in the backcourt with Golden. Pitch is up front with Bennett and Harvey. Get it inside to Harvey. Oh, my God. Golden was stripped by Porter and away from the ball. There's a foul on Bobby Martin, a terrible foul. Not only in that it negated the steal, but now Martin has four. An incredibly late call by Sam Licklider, the official. The ball was stolen out in front. He should have let that call go. There was no impact on the play. He made the call on Bart Martin, who picked up his fourth. Big break for Hugh Durham's Georgia Bulldogs. I don't think he was even watching the flow of the game. The referee, that is. Well, it was away from the play, so I didn't see what Bobby Martin did, but if he delivered a shot that was necessary to be called, then the officials did the right thing. <laughs> I'll let you say that. Spoken like a guy who never played, right, Bill? <laughs> I'll tell you, if you uh, keep your eye on Tinch right there with the ball against Martin, they're really throwing a lot of elbows in each other's faces. The rebound of the Harvey miss belongs to Shorter. He is single-handedly keeping fit in this game. Antonio Harvey's shot to hit the front of the rim, all of them. McNeil's shot hit the front of the rim. Martin kept it alive for McNeil. Shorter. Here come the Panthers. They're within three. This is Big East basketball right here. Knock them down, get to the hoop. I think Pittsburgh still needs Tony Dorsett out there, though, to get through the line. Jody Patton stops the pit rush with a three. Jody Patton, been the, he and Marshall Wilson have been the heroes of this game. I think Antonio Harvey's getting tired, too. He's been playing very hard, a lot of opportunities. All his shots are... Again, Shorter uses his muscle advantage to draw the foul. There's Latero Green begging, trying to get in this game. I'm sure the coach has just said, sorry, Latero, my decision, you're not getting in there. That hand is too valuable for your future. Junior in college, got next year. Most of these players coming back should be a fine Georgia team for years to come. Shorter with 14 points and six rebounds. Watching the Terrell Green in practice yesterday, it pained him every time he caught the ball. He couldn't make a one-handed catch with that left hand. He had to always catch it with two or with only the right hand. He couldn't dribble it all to his left with the left hand. So he really wouldn't expect it to be too productive even if he had been able to play. I think the only time you can play with a broken hand like he has right now is if you're a Wilt Chamberlain, a guy who's going to knock down shots, get rebounds, intimidate. But if you're going to go out there and have to play with skill and poise and leadership and handling the ball all game long, there's no way you can get it done with a broken hand. 11 minutes to play. Georgia by four. Shot was long from Tink. Georgia's losing control of this game right now. Pittsburgh coming back. George is not playing a smart enough style. Glover, nearly from the NBA line. What a story Tim Glover is. The freshman from Houston played very sparingly during the year. He's knocked down a couple of three-pointers and now a charge at the other end. Martin courageously drew the foul because if that goes against Martin, it's his fifth and he's out of the game. Instead, it's the third against Sean Golden. Here comes Golden, right down the lane. Martin with good position. Golden just runs right over him. I think Hugh Durham needs to call a timeout and get the, his, his team reorganized and refocused. They're tired, they're not executing, they're not getting into what they want to do. Their double-digit lead a moment ago is now one. The Panthers trying to take the lead. Martin is fouled. Orlando Bennett picks up the foul. Orlando Bennett, that's his third foul. I think what uh, Georgia is trying too much of a gambling defense right here. Just play these guys straight up. Don't double team. Make him get the ball to one of their guys. Just let him make a tough one-on-one -on -one move. If it goes in, that's okay. We'll live with that. Jody Patton's going to have to go out of the game. Marshall Wilson back in. I think Georgia's in real danger of losing total control of this game. Pittsburgh seems to have a surging uh, style to their play right now. 
Maybe a key play. Paul Evans leaving Bobby Martin in with three fouls right at the start of the, first, of the second half. Ted is on a 15 to 5 run. We're in Louisville, Kentucky at Freedom Hall, the regular season home of the University of Louisville Cardinals. Today it's the site of first round action in the Southeast region. The back and forth game. Georgia has led through most of this game. And right now we're tied at 51 with 10-15 left. Pittsburgh dropping back into his zone. Harvey. Shoots over Martin. That's a good place for the Bulldogs to send it because Martin has the four fouls. I don't know why they haven't been posting up all game. Martin's having a huge game. It's the first time he's turned toward that left shoulder. Nice to see that he can go both ways. Lover short with the three and Bennett ripped it down. I don't think this, this patient slowdown game for Georgia is the kind of game they like to play or that they play well enough to beat Pittsburgh, who's used to a more deliberate style. Rod Cole still has not scored. Harvey just made a basket to go right back to it. Tim Glover, the freshman from Houston, Texas. On the thorn in the side of Hugh Durham, he didn't expect anything. Probably did not expect to see Tim Glover at all. Hugh Durham should get the ball into that man right there's hand, Marshall Wilson, Antonio Harvey, and, and Kinch, the rest of this ball game. Wilson knocked down the baseline jumper. He has 19. He's nearing his career high of 25 against Auburn earlier this year. Keep your eye on Reggie Kinch and Brian Shorter going at it in the paint down low. They are just hammering each other. That time Shorter ended up in the seat of his pants. Glover. Gets the three to fall. Had three three-pointers for Tim Glover, who only played in six of their league games. That's how far down the bench he is. He generally only comes in when Pitt needs three-point shots. They don't necessarily need them now, but he's played well and has earned the opportunity to stay in. Georgia by one, with 8.05 remaining. Wilson, off the mark this time. Martin the rebound. Two on one, fifth break. Four to the shorter. Yeah, baby! That basket yeah, should not count. It looked Let's like McNeil picked it in. There will be a foul on the play. The fast break on the wing. Cole back on defense. He's helpless back there. Darrell Porter, a tremendous offensive player coming to the hoop. Antonio Harvey just smashes Brian Shorter to the ground. Harvey heading for the bench. Neville Austin is back in. Jody Patton also returns for Hugh Durham. And Reggie Kinch will head out. Shorter at the line with Pitt trailing by one. Ryan is 16 points today. I think the conditioning is a problem for Shorter. I think that that viral infection, it takes years to get over something that serious. He wasn't able to play in the preseason, and even though it's still two or three months later, I don't think he's strong enough to, to finish it out down the stretch. This was the worst year for Shorter statistically of his three years at this. Last year, he led the Big East in scoring at 20 points per game. This year, 13 and a half. We're tied at 55, and we'll be right back. Tied at 55, hit up to 39%. They've shot 50% from the floor this half, and they've made six of their last nine. Each team has made equal use of the three-point shot, and Wilson is leading the way with 17 points for Georgia. You're looking at Rod Cole, who has yet to score, averaging 11 as the third leading scorer for Georgia. He's only attempted two shots today. Back to that graphic, Sean. I think that Georgia's taken too many three-pointers, with the exception of this man here. He's the only three-point shooter they got on the team right now. 
But 17 is too many for a team with this many great big guys inside. Martin with four fouls was shut off by Bennett. Shorter, he's been the dominant man in the second half. In the lane for a while. And he's called for three seconds by Lenny Wirtz. Now that's the kind of defense I was suggesting that they play against Shorter. Just stand over the top of him. These guys from Georgia have five or six inches on him every time. Paul Evans says, my God, they finally figured out how to guard the guy. Just be a big, tall guy over the top of him. New Mexico falling horribly behind there. Not a type of team that can come back. And Northeast Louisiana has stayed with two for that entire game in Minneapolis. This has been tight throughout as well. We're tied at 55. You see the time remaining. 7.05 left in the second half. Wilson now at 20. He's having the time of his life out here. He says, finally, Green breaks his hand. I should have done that myself earlier. I get to be the star now. I cheated him out of two points. He now has 22. McNeil. Hammered as he's sent it up. Neville Austin had to come over and make the play as McNeil shed his defender. First round coverage continues today. Second game here in Louisville, it's New Orleans and Kansas. Many of you will be seeing that action. Other games in the first round to follow this one, Pepperdine and Seton Hall, Southern Miss and NC State. Southern Miss struggled toward the end of the season. And East Tennessee State takes on Iowa. Now it's Austin playing often head-to-head -head with Martin. They each have four fouls. Two-point lead for Georgia as McNeil made one of two. Pittsburgh back to a man-to-man -man defense. I'd go right inside. I'd get the ball to Wilson inside of the block, let him go to work. NBA three. Shorter the rebound of the patent miss. Matthews and, and Sean Miller, the regular starting guard, as the ball is kicked out of bounds there. The starting guard for, Jer uh, for Pittsburgh has been nowhere to be seen in the second half. Yeah, that's really tough to figure because they are veterans who have played in virtually every game of their career as starters. Jason Matthews, a senior. Miller would be a senior, but sat out all of last year after foot surgery. But they've been on the bench, and it's been Porter and Glover who have played well. Quite possibly. That's one of the reasons the players don't get along with Paul Evans sometimes. Glover again. Give him four standing on my foot here at the broadcaster's booth. He has 12 points. He had only 14 points for the entire season prior to today. He played in 15 games during the regular season and scored a total of 14 points. shot clock. Wilson's been the hot man. Paul looking for his first hoop. It's a block. And it's Bobby Martin. He's out of the game. It is on Martin. That's five. He'll have to go sit down next to Coach Evans. Good penetration by Cole off the dribble handoff. One thing that Martin does is he steps in to try to take the charge. He's too close to the basket. You've got to come out on the floor, Sean, to to uh, attack the guy who's penetrating. You can't wait underneath the basket. Martin fouls out with five points and four rebounds. Not a good day for him. It's been a tough year for Bobby. He missed six games with a ripped open middle finger on his right hand. He did that twice while dunking the basketball. He had to have surgery when that finger became infected. We were speaking recently about Paul Evans and the, and the decision to play the guards uh, and keep Matthews and Miller on the bench. It's working out sort of well for them since Glover's got all those three-point bombs right. that have kept them in the ball game. He's staying with the hot hand. But he's not gone back to Morningstar. He's gone to a shorter line up here with the substitution. Rod Cole looking for his first point. He is one of the interesting stories in the tournament this year. His parents divorced after his sophomore year in high school. He was the custody of Rod Cole was given to his mother, Mary, who thereafter became a Jehovah's Witness. 
for religious reasons, she did not want Rod Cole to play sports and would not allow him to. And wound up in a sports battle. Custody was handed over to Rod's father, Maurice, and Rod started playing basketball again. He still keeps in touch with his mother, Mary, but she does not come to watch him play. It's senior day when the families came to Athens for the final home game. She did not attend. They talk on the phone, but she prays that Cole will give up sports. As I said earlier, that's good for Georgia. Get him out of there. Get Antonio Harvey back in there. Get Reggie Tinch in there. It's nice to see parents taking an, an, an active interest in their uh, children's careers, but uh, I think saying no to sports is probably a little bit uh, too heavy. Well, you have to respect anybody's religious beliefs, but I think you also have to respect Rod Cole's ability to make those decisions for himself. Two points and eight rebounds for Neville Austin, who is done for the day. There's Rod Cole, who's had a terrific career at Georgia. Named to the coaches All-SEC defensive team this year. He was third team All-SEC last year. Marty Blake, director of scouting for the NBA, calls Rod Cole one of the most underrated guards in the country. Yeah, I think they should take Arlando Bennett out here right now and go with Jody Patton. And a smaller lineup. Well, here comes Pat. Why take Reggie Tinch out? He's your toughest guy. This game is going to go right down to the wire. It's going to be a lot of physical play around the basket. Orlando Bennett is a good big man, but Harvey Bennett's been dominating the inside whenever he's in there. Darrell Porter. It's amazing how much of his time he gives to causes in the Pittsburgh community. He grew up in the Hill District of Pittsburgh, a rough neighborhood by his own admission. He's a volunteer tutor for kids in that neighborhood. He visits his alma mater, Perry High School, to talk to kids about staying out of trouble. He cheers on those teams. We mentioned earlier he and Miller co-coach an AAU team in Pittsburgh this summer, a 13 or 14 year old who qualified for the national tournament. 4.50 to play. Pittsburgh by one. Patton. Didn't get the bounce. Shorter. Another rebound. His fifth. Pittsburgh blocking out very well. Quick shot by Porter that time. Uh, by Patton that time. Porter to miss. McNeil to follow. Then Shorter tried to slam and miss. They should tell the defensive players that everybody in this game is right-handed. Don't let them dribble down the lane with their right hand. Or some lap. Wilson's a forward, but he's been spending a lot of time handling the ball well away from the hoop and beyond the three-point line. Harvey puts Georgia back up by one as we near four minutes remaining. I don't know why they don't do that all game long. I would just pound it inside, time after time and time. Harvey a couple times in a row, Marshall Wilson a couple times, Reggie Tinch. Forget the guard, get it in there. Get, to, get some easy jumpers inside. Twenty seconds on the shot clock. Timeout called by Paul Evans. Pitt has just one timeout remaining. Georgia leads by one with three and a half to play. Here is our game situation. Pitt now with just one timeout remaining. Georgia has all three, but Georgia's up to ten fouls. Pitt will shoot two every time the Panthers are fouled from here on in. The arrow favors Georgia. We've talked all game about Paul Evans. That should have been a backcourt violation, in my opinion. We talked all game about Paul Evans and his substitution pattern. Now he's gone back to guys who haven't played the whole second half. He's got Miller and Matthews in there in the backcourt. Smartly, though, keeping Glover in. He's been bombing away relentlessly. And that is a 45-second violation. They had no clue that there was a shot clock violation approaching. Well, that shouldn't happen out of a timeout. 16 seconds there was when we started play again. They just never got... They never got near it. I think that's got to be the coach's fault because he's got to tell them right away, hey, we got to get into something quick. We only got five seconds to get into our play and 10 seconds to execute it. 
What a crucial time to make a mistake like that. Trailing by one with 3.05 remaining. But those crucial mistakes that cost coaches their careers and make players' careers. Wilson was a little bit off balance, but Patton tracked it down. And a fresh 45 for the Bulldogs. 2.45 to play. George is 62 and Pitt 61. I don't like the fact that Georgia is slowing it down a little bit, trying to play the clock. I think they got to go in. A one-point lead is nothing. You got to keep scoring points. We welcome those of you who are just joining us from other games. We've had a terrific game throughout here in Louisville, Kentucky. Georgia has a one-point lead. They have the basketball, and it's Orlando Bennett with the putback oh. to push the Bulldog lead to three. I'm Sean McDonough with Bill Walton. This is first-round action in the Southeast region. Georgia in red and pit in white. The Panthers, the higher-seeded team. They are the sixth seed of the Southeast, and Georgia is number 11. Miller and, Miller. Miller and Glover trying to get the threes. Good defense by Antonio Harvey there, who's been a tower of strength for the Georgia Bulldogs all game long. Nine turnovers now for Pitt. Man-to-man -man defense for the Panthers. Georgia's got to keep scoring. Don't think about the clock. Just get it inside. Get it to Harvey or Wilson anytime. For those of you just joining us, Georgia's leading scorer, Latero Green, has not played at all. He's sidelined with a broken bone in his left hand. They've got to get into something now. 10, 12 seconds on the shot clock. I think they're too slow here. Cole had some room in the lane, but kicked it out to Patton. A contested three that's way off. That's what happens when teams start playing the clock. You've got to stick with your offense, stick with your stuff. Keep attacking. Score, score, score. Cole needed to look to the hoop in that situation. He has some running room. A three would tie up for Pitt with 50 seconds left. Georgia, 64 and Pitt, 61. 42 seconds left. Shorter comes the lead to one. Brian Shorter acting like Charles Barkley. Lower your shoulders, knock him out of your way, get to the hoop. He had two at the half, he now has 19. Tim Glover with the reach in on Rod Cole. First foul against Glover. Pittsburgh is now over the limit. This will be a one and one opportunity coming up for Hugh Durham's Bulldogs. Antoine Jones goes to the bench for Pitt. And coming in for Georgia is Reggie Tinch replacing Jody Patton. Very tough substitutions here with only 34 and a half seconds to go. First of all, Cole's got to make these free throws. He has not played well offensively. He has two points. Two of two from the line is Rod Cole. Neither team has shot well. Pitt was shooting 32% at the half. They picked that up. Seven three-pointers for each side, although Georgia has attempted eight more. And Wilson has filled the void created by the loss of Latero Green, who hesitates to watch from the bench. Well, he's usually the guy who's taking these big free throws. He doesn't want anybody else to get this opportunity. Cole. I tell you, he'll sleep well tonight if they win on those two free throws. Pitt needs a three to tie with 30 seconds left. They have two of the best three-point shooters in the country. This man is one of them. Matthews <laughs> a three from the corner. I'd like to see a timeout. Timeout by Hugh Durham. <laughs> they're, they're taking too much time here. Well, they do get the timeout with 14 and 3 tenths seconds remaining. It's been this way throughout in Louisville. We're tied at 66. timeout bill who do you expect georgia will look to marshall wilson has been the hot man 
I'd get the ball to Cole. Unfortunately, they ran five seconds off the clock before they even called the timeout. They should have quickly jumped to the timeout and given them the 19 seconds that they had when they initially got the ball. Now, I think that what, what I would try to do is get the ball into Wilson's hands. He's been hot. Antonio Harvey's a darn good basketball player who's having a good game, too. Penetration with Cole, but then quickly get it to Wilson or Harvey. Let them make the big play at the end. Tied at 66. Pitt had a one-point lead at the half. This is the 12th tie in the game, and there have been 15 lead changes. So for those of you who have just joined us, that will give you an idea of how closely contested this game has been. I don't know why Hugh Durham was talking to the assistant coaches there. He should be talking to the players about what they're going to do. Well, apparently the strategy has already been set. We're coming down to the end of this game, and this is where careers are made right here. Guys who can hit the big shot at the end or make the big defensive play to keep your team alive. There's the man who it should go to. Those two, 44 and 34, Marshall Wilson and Antonio Harvey, respectively. They don't want to take the shot, though, until there's one or two seconds left on the shot on the game clock. Patton, Cole, Bennett, Wilson, and Harvey on the floor for Georgia. That is the fivesome that will try to win it and send the Bulldogs into the second round. Too slow. Cole, open from the foul line. Missed it. Four seconds left for Darrell Porter. Porter to win it at the buzzer. Will not go. And we will go to overtime. In the first game of the 1991 NCAA Championship, we have our first overtime game of the tournament. Cole had so much time to make that play. He, he was slow getting it started in the backcourt. Then his defensive man fell to the ground. He was wide open. Cole's going to run the length of the court from one end to the other to get the ball. He could have got the ball at half court fairly easily. Not that much pressure. Look at stop. Why stop? you got to move up the court with the basketball. The defensive man falls flat on his butt. Keep going to the hoop with that much time left. You have to practice those last-second shots so that you have a sense of how many times Darrell Porter comes back. Three-pointer straight as a string, just not long enough. But Georgia liked their chances, liked it. Oh, no. <laughs> and they had to sweat out those last four seconds as Porter raced up the court. So now, no matter which team loses, they're going to remember that last chance that they had to win it in regulation because each side had a chance. And it would have been a great story had this man made the shot because Cole has not played well today in the absence of three. But all of that would have been forgotten had that shot dropped. Now we started all over again with five minutes. Foul stay the same, so both teams still in the penalty. Five more minutes, let's get it going here. This is Pitt's first overtime game of the year. Georgia doesn't like this territory. They were 0-3 in overtime this year. I think Georgia hurt themselves at the end of regulation by playing the clock too much. Patton to Bennett, they're out there to start the overtime with Wilson, Cole, and Harvey. And Fiveson that ended regulation play. Harvey. Bumps as he shot it over McNeil. McNeil picks up the foul. He's out there for Pitt with Jones and Shorter up front. Glover and Miller in the backcourt. First foul of the game for Chris McNeil. Paul Evans has not used this lineup much at all this year. I think that's a big problem for Pittsburgh right now. They don't know how to play together, this five players. I think when you're coming down the stretch, you got to go with guys who know exactly what the guy standing next to him is going to do. Mm -hmm. Antonio Harvey. Plus, Jason Matthews doesn't play the whole second half, comes in, hits a three-pointer, and then even, he's not even in to start the overtime, but he's in there now. A three-guard lineup for Pittsburgh. Antoine Jones went to the bench. Harvey struggles from the line. And that struggle continues. Still tied at 66. We're 25 seconds into overtime. Glover missed the three, Harvey the board. It's a good shot for them. Glover's been knocking those down all game long. Matthews has just hit one from there. Man-to-man -man defense by Pittsburgh. 
I'd go inside. Georgia has a huge size advantage right now at every position. The men in the middle have fouled out for each team. The starting centers, Austin of Georgia and Martin of Pittsburgh, fouled out within seconds of each other. That's not a big foul on Jason Matthews. Not a big loss for Neville Austin to foul out for Georgia. But it is a loss for Paul Evans and Bobby Martin being on the bench. Reggie Tinch. He's in his first season at Georgia. He's a junior, but he spent two years at Connors State Junior College in Warner, Oklahoma. Rich City from the free throw line in the overtime period. Bobby Martin, no chance to get back in this action. We played more than a minute. Neither team has scored in the extra session. Matthew. Porter tried to corral the rebound, but Bennett ripped it away from him. Glover right on him, couldn't take the three. Ten, too strong. Harvey went over the back to keep it alive. And fouled was Bennett as he took it up at Chris McNeil. Chris McNeil is yelling at the referee, trying to get Antonio Harvey off his back there. Not quite sure why that foul wasn't called. That's almost an automatic call as Chris McNeil continues to complain to the officials. Orlando Bennett got the loose ball that, that Harvey kept alive and just stuck it back in. All they could do, the Pittsburgh Panthers hammer foul him. And the way Georgia's been shooting free throws, gee, that's his best strategy all day. That's all of his free throws to start the overtime. Tough to win that way. All for five from the line. That's practice time. Practice time and concentration and conditioning. Man-to-man -man defense for Georgia. Still a scoreless overtime. We played nearly two minutes. Shorter, double team. What a shot. Reach back through the two guys who came down, two guys who were both seven-footers, jump out of the gym. Beautiful play by Shorter. He has 21. Bennett drives the baseline. Rejected by Glover. <laughs> the 6-1 guard, Tim Glover, who's come out of nowhere to be a major figure in this game, blocked that shot. Inside, Harvey, short, rebound Shorter, hit with the ball and a two-point lead. Brian Shorter has scored the only basket of this overtime. It was 66 all after regulation. We welcome those of you who are just joining us here in Louisville, Kentucky. The first round action of the Southeast region. The six-seeded Pitt Panthers and the 11 seed Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia has only themselves to blame for being behind here. They had control of the game. They let it get away from them at the end of regulation. Tinch just picked up his fourth foul. Hugh Durham is trying to tell... Uh, Marshall Wilson to get something done offensively. They've missed five free throws to start the overtime here. All their shots, they're going to be kicking themselves all night if they don't win this ball game. Matthews is not likely to miss in overtime or any other time. Jason has nine points now. Hit by three. The foul was against Rod Cole, and that's his fourth. Wilson back in, and Orlando Bennett goes to the bench. Why was Wilson on the bench so long down the stretch there in an overtime? He's been their star player all game. Gotta, I mean, these games aren't that long. He's got to play the whole game out there. Two for Matthews, an 86% free throw shooter. He goes to the bench. Paul Evans going for a little defense with Antoine Jones and a four-point lead. That's a tough call. Lenny Works missed it, I believe. But great defense by Glover that time, intimidating Jody Patton out of make, making that three-pointer. He just ran right by him. This is Pittsburgh's largest lead of the game. Georgia has not scored in the overtime. The pit lead is four. His first field goal of the game, he has six points. Pretty sure it's done at the end of regulation. Get all the way to the hoop, he still has five seconds. 
Pittsburgh's probably a little bit better at the delay game, running it down. They're used to that kind of style of play in the Big East. Paul Evans down for a timeout. His Panthers have a two-point lead with a minute 44 left in our first overtime. Bill, what do you look for Pittsburgh out of a timeout with a two-point lead? Well, first of all, I just get the ball into shorter right away, but then when the defense collapses, spot up my three-point shooters. I got a lot of good ones out there now. Miller, Matthews, and Glover, who's been red hot. But they're going to play the clock, it looks like here. They've only got a... On the shot clock. With a two-point lead, you can't play the clock. You got to play the score. Ten on the shot clock. Matthews. That's a two that will not fall. Bennett a rebound. They just take away all their momentum when they kill the clock like that. They've got to attack. Now Hugh Durham wants to time out with a minute 12 left in overtime. Pittsburgh with a two-point lead. We'll return to Louisville, Kentucky on CBS after this. That's the story with a minute 12 left in overtime. Pittsburgh with a two-point lead. The Panthers have just one timeout remaining. Each team shoots two foul shots on every foul from here on in. And the arrow favors Pitt. Georgia should get the ball to Marshall Wilson right now. But he's been sitting out and the game has slowed down so much as teams play the clock. He doesn't even have any sort of rhythm going. Now it looks like Georgia going to spread their half-court offense and run some time off the clock. I hope they know that they're behind. Ball guarded by Porter. Wilson, strong drive, lost it. Jones and McNeil converge. It looked like Antoine Jones stripped him. Now a foul. Miller fouled in the backcourt by Harvey. Miller's one of the best free-throw shooters in the nation. Four fouls on Antonio Harvey. Nice drive by Marshall Wilson. Gets in the lane. Beautiful strip by Antoine Jones. Goes right in there. Officials just laid off the whistle. Let him play. And the Georgia Bulldogs say, we blew this one, guys. Sean Miller set a Big East record for free throw shooting this year. 92.3%. Sean Miller got a fused bone in his foot, the Taylor joint. Very, very difficult to ever play with a fused bone in your body, particularly in your foot. He's just, oh, you know, real study in courage out there. Now Georgia needs two possessions with 39 seconds left. They trail by four. Wilson for three. Air ball underneath Harvey. Two strong. Short of the rebound. Tip by four with the ball with 25 seconds left in overtime. And they foul Miller again. You might as well put two more on the board for Pip. Latell Green just can't believe that he didn't get in this ball game, but I believe that Pittsburgh's got to feel very good. They're great at killing the clock at the end of the game. They got great free throw shooters. They got Sean Miller, who will shoot two here. They got Jason Matthews. Glover, who is a non-entity this season before today's game. I think Paul Evans has got to be ecstatic with their, with their position right now. 21 seconds, soon to be a six-point lead. And a disappointing day as you look at Miller for Rod Cole, who just fouled out. Perhaps the last game of his career at Georgia. Six points today, just one of four from the floor. Why did he only take four shots? He's usually a big scorer for them, averaging 10 points a game. Latero Green out. Bobby Martin sitting on the bench there. Says, I, I live another day. Six-point lead for the Panthers. 20 seconds remaining. Patton to half the lead. Georgia ball with 13 remaining. 
First round coverage continues following this game. Pepperdine and Seton Hall, New Orleans, Kansas, Southern Miss and NC State, and East Tennessee State and Iowa. Wilson hits the three. McNeil the rebound. Pittsburgh will advance to the second round. <laughs>